When he died, Jeremiah bitterly lamented him. After Josiah, four unjust kings ruled Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiashin, and finally Zedekiah, who were on the throne when the Babylonian forces destroyed Jerusalem and burned a temple. The book of Jeremiah is the longest of the prophetic books. To give you an idea, if you combine the 12 minor prophet books, it is only a third of Jeremiah. Jeremiah's life, Jeremiah lived in the last days of the southern kingdom of Judah. He consistently warned of an imminent disaster caused by the nation's neglect of true religion, its return to pagan practices, and its social injustice. Because of his terrible predictions against Judah, Jeremiah was continually subjected to persecution, ridicule, and hostility from kings and rulers. He was thrown into a pit full of mud or sewage. Jeremiah was not the only prophet of his time, as Habakkuk and Zephaniah were among his contemporaries. He also overlapped with the time of Ezekiel, who was in captivity in Babylon. It is impressive that the substance of the messages proclaimed by Jeremiah and Ezekiel was similar, despite one prophesying in Palestine and the other in Babylon. Historical background of Jeremiah during Jeremiah's ministry in 612 BC, Syria was defeated by Babylon, which became the dominant military power. Nebuchadnezzar's army partially destroyed Jerusalem in 604 BC and took creative people to Babylon. In the first part of the three main removals, the second group of exiles was taken to Babylon in 597 BC, and the third and final removal occurred around 586 BC, when Jerusalem was burned and destroyed. During these invasions, Jeremiah was duly protected and received freedom and provisions from the invading army captain. Later, Jeremiah was taken against his will, along with his secretary Baruch and the daughters of King Zedekiah. They escaped and returned to the land of Judah. His final fate is not clearly recorded in the Bible. Jeremiah's message, Jeremiah was appointed as the prophet to the nations and to all the kingdoms of the world. He was specially sent to help Israel. Although much of his message was directed at the people of Judah, he was also instructed to prophesy to the nation of Israel. This has special significance as the ten northern tribes of Israel were punished and captured in 722 BC, about a hundred years before Jeremiah began his ministry. Why is this fact significant? It is illogical to imagine that his prophecies refer to ancient Israel before the captivity of Israel in 722 BC. This would be like predicting the First or Second World War long after they had passed. For example, passages in Jeremiah clearly refer to the period before Christ's return at the end of this current era of human government. It is evident that there is a warning message for the modern descendants of the people of Israel through Jeremiah. God warns our modern nations that if they reject God and biblical teachings, it will lead to moral and spiritual degradation and require a terrible penalty. The lamenting prophet Jeremiah is often characterized as a gloomy discourager with a pessimistic prophetic message. This is a one-sided impression that is not based on the entire content of the book. He officially proclaimed the message that God gave a warning message of imminent punishment unless the people repented of their voluntary disobedience. However, Jeremiah's message contained remarkable and joyful prophecies of mercy, deliverance, and abundant life for all. He predicted a time when the Messiah would return to abolish human suffering, wars, and misery. Through Jeremiah, God revealed the way to a change of heart, that will make a world of peace possible. Jeremiah was a prophet of the Old Covenant with the heart of the New Covenant. Jeremiah is portrayed as someone who cried and lamented over the iniquity and unrepentant attitude of his people. However, his sadness was not a weakness, but an indication of a spiritually strong and mature individual. Jeremiah was in good company, as Jesus Christ himself is described as a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Yes, Isaiah, 
as one of the greatest messianic prophets was referring to him. And the potter and the clay in chapters 18 and 19, Jeremiah employs the analogy of the potter and the clay to illustrate a fundamental biblical principle. God is the potter and we are the clay. The clay has no right to demand anything from the potter. If the potter wants to reshape the clay, it depends entirely on him. Similarly, we must be willing to let God mold us according to his will and purpose. We serve a loving and compassionate God, and whatever form he decides to mold us will only be for our benefit. God will bless those who respond positively, we can draw two lessons from the potter and clay passage. Look, Jeremiah's message brings us hope. We are vessels in the hands of the potter, and if God wants, he creates a new vessel. With this, we learn two lessons. The first, we need to know that we are fragile. Starting with our physical bodies, God created us from dust. However, our fragility is also in the moral field. We live in days of relativism, where everyone does what they want. This generates anguish because human beings need parameters. We are also spiritually fragile. We can say that we believe, but not as much as we should want. Many times, we falter. The second lesson we learn is that we need to trust in the Lord's faithfulness. When Jeremiah went down to the potter's house, he was handed over to his work on the wheels. Similarly, God entrusts himself to his work, which is to make and remake us. His specialty is making vessels of honor, and he does it according to his will and love. God has control of all things. We need to surrender to his action and not be so reluctant. Jeremiah, the prophet who prophesied during the reign of its last monarchs, lived in the period of decline and fall of the southern kingdom in the 7th and 6th centuries BC. Jeremiah was the son of Wilkes and was born around 650 BC in the city of Attuk, in the territory of Benjamin near Jerusalem. The name Jeremiah can mean the Lord identifies or the Lord exalts. In addition to being a prophet, he was also a priest. His childhood occurred in a tumultuous time in the history of Israel with religious decline and paganism. Despite this, he grew up in a God-fearing home, in touch with the religious tradition of his people. Called by the Lord as a prophet in the 13th year of Josiah's reign, in 627 BC, Jeremiah initially felt inadequate for the responsibility, but God reassured him. He served his ministry for at least 40 years, prophesying during the reigns of four kings of Judah. Jeremiah's ministry began in a year marked by significant international changes, including the rise of the Babylonian Empire. After a period of silence of about 13 years, during which he moved to Jerusalem, he prophesied against leaders like Jehoiakim and Zedekiah, warning of the inevitability of Babylonian captivity. The main message of Jeremiah included a call to repentance, a warning of God's imminent judgment, the prediction of Babylonian captivity and the fall of Jerusalem. He also held the people accountable for their sins and announced the salvation of a remnant through exile with the promise of a marvelous restoration and a new covenant. Despite persecutions, Jeremiah maintained a vigorous ministry known as the Weeping Prophet. After the fall of Jerusalem, he stayed in Babylon and later in Egypt, continuing to preach the word of God until his death. The exact circumstances of his death are not known, but his fame endured, and there were beliefs about a possible resurrection among the Jews. Jeremiah was a contemporary of other prophets such as Zephaniah, Nahum, Ezekiel, and Daniel.